All right. Welcome. Welcome to day two. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I can't believe it. Day one was so action packed. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you today. I hope you're all hydrating, getting caffeinated, and enjoying. All right. Uh, so I'm here with a really great group of folks. Um, I'm Zane, our VP of Engineering here at Horizon Labs, and I want to kick it off with just some quick introductions. We'll start with Sebastian. Hello, my name is Sebastian Mick. I'm a celebrity photographer. I was, uh, I've been working for a French magazine called Paris Match for uh, 23 years. Um, it's uh, Paris Match for who don't know because it's a French magazine. It's a mix between celebrities, politics, culture. Um, and through that media, I was able to meet a lot of celebrities and uh, get a chance to sit with them and photograph them and exchange a lot of stuff with them, and especially photos. So that's me, and I'm about to build a new company called uh, You Never Tag Me, which I'd be happy to explain you about very quickly. Because in 2013, I made a photograph of Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, Cindy Crawford, Olivier Roustin, and the rest of the family. And Kim uh, posted a picture that I've done on her Instagram and never tagged me. <laughs> And she generated more than, uh, I think, 1.5 million likes at the time. And I thought it was unfair to uh, the artist community to not give credit when it's due. And I think uh, Web3, and especially tokenization, can help people generate incomes and get respect back. <laughs> so that's what I'm ambitioning to do. It's more like a photographic label. And, uh, Yes. Good morning, everyone. I'm Serena. I work in product at Horizon Labs. I work in the subdivision of the tools team, so we're responsible for token mint, um, future applications on the Horizon ecosystem, Cobalt, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. Everybody, is this thing on? No, no. Is this one on? Okay. I don't know. They gave me two, so it was 50-50. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Jonathan Teplitsky. Uh, I've actually been with Horizon for five years. I was uh, temporarily uh, an employee at Horizon Labs as well for about two months before we spun off uh, my own company, which is called Layer 3 Labs. Uh, Layer 3 Labs essentially does software development and advisory services. And we have a bunch of clients, including Horizon, which is one of them, which we'll be talking about today, which is a, a game that we're building on Token Mint. Uh, but some of our other clients include uh, the Jane Goodall Institute. Anybody know Jane Goodall and you know, her documentary, The Hope? Um, as well as Bolero. Bolero is a public company in the United States, two billion market cap. Essentially, they own every bowling alley at least 500 of them, uh, and they own the Professional Bowling Association. So a lot of what we do is help brands go from Web 2 to Web 3. Great, great. And so yesterday, uh, Rob, our CEO, did kick it off, and he mentioned a lot about Token Mint. Token Mint is a platform, Cobalt, and uh, I'd like for us to just talk a little bit more about what Token Mint is and just like a high, higher level overview. So to Serena, as the product manager for um, the sub, uh, sub team, tools team. Tell us more about Token Mint. Yeah, great question. Uh, so Token Mint's actually part of our first side chain, um, Token Chain, and it's this ecosystem where you have that no code platform, uh, Token Mint, where you can create, um, or anyone can create their own fungible tokens and soon to be non-fungible tokens. Um, and part of that is we also created Cobalt, which is a web, um, a browser extension um, wallet. So now uh, anyone can, you know, store and see their fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens. Yeah, I love that. And, but uh, tell me a little bit more about why Token Mint is different. Yeah, so it is the first platform in the Horizon ecosystem where you can create Token, and tokens and NFTs, um, and essentially in the future, like when interoperability is like the big thing, um, you can transfer your tokens from sidechain to sidechain. 
um, and potentially, you know, we're looking into adding EVM compatibility, adding um, other compatibility in that sense. So uh, essentially, it's a you know easy to use platform where you can create tokens in the rising system. And that, uh, there's definitely a power to this uh, to tokenization and the token economy, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Sebastian, we met at uh, in Austin as part of Consensus. And you, uh, was, you also uh, had an experience with Token Mint because we had a booth there. Yeah, talk a little bit more about that. I mean, I had a great experience. I arrived in Austin, and you know, I'm not a tech guy. I'm a photographer, I am an artist. I barely know what I'm talking about today <laughs> because it's, it's web free. We're about to, to build it, and somebody says yesterday uh, we're at web 2.5. And I think it's true because, I mean, we imagine the metaverse, but we don't really know how it's going to look like and how we're going to interact with it. But what I can tell you is that I was fascinated by uh, how it was easy to, to mint my token and how proud I was. When Brian helped me, I was just blown away because I think uh, to be able to deliver a product without no, uh, I mean, to deliver a product to, to a client, which is me, which is trying to build on this blockchain, with me not having any knowledge of coding or programming was beautiful. And I always say, you know, the technology is great when the interface with the user is working pretty well. And um, I really experimented that. It was just like uh, amazing and terrific, and I was so proud. Finally, after like 20 minutes, I talked to Brian and my YNTM token for You Never Tag Me existed on the, on the blockchain. And I have to thank you guys for this. Yes, much kudos to the team and Brian. Brian's sitting here, uh, yeah, really making it easy. And of course, our tech team as well. Uh, yeah, and as an accomplished photographer and a NFT enthusiast, how would you leverage a token mint even more? I think uh, there is really room and space today for the photography industry, which is representing almost like 10 billion in revenue a year, to really build a platform where a photographer can express themselves, and especially photographer with, with talent and celebrity photographer and famous photographer. Because I was talking to David LaChapelle recently, and uh, there is a lot of famous photographers. They don't know what to do with the archives. And uh, I think there is room and space to build something a little bit more boutique. And um, I want to use the, the token as a level for my company. And also, um, through that token, you know, we live in a society which is uh, a little complicated to interact with days, where there is a lot of uh, disrespect, violence. And um, I think uh, my goal here, with the help of Zen and, and, the, and the company, is, is to build a, a better economy, uh, a better... Um, I don't know how you call that, but a better uh, ecosystem, maybe? And, um, and also to monetize like you work, because I'm a little tired of people and photographers, and especially sharing content and stuff for free. And in my vision, I want to challenge Instagram and tell us, you know, there is no way we share our picture for free anymore. I mean, you have to pay for content. You have to pay for content in music. You have to pay for content in photography. And um, my company is also a, a message about, about uh, it's almost political. <laughs> so, um, and uh, I'm so glad again that I was able to, to at least put this token together in an easy way. Because it makes me focus on the art, because I'm an artist. Yeah, such a great way of putting it, especially with the creator as an artist and the creator economy. Um, and I want to shift over to Jonathan. Uh, Layer 3 Labs was one of the first apps, has one of the first apps on Token Mint. Yeah, we'd like to learn more about it. Sure, so we're working with Horizon to build a game uh, on Token Mint. So we're building a game called Kong Hero. Um, and uh, essentially what it will be is uh, kind of like a Super Mario Brothers type game where you can navigate the levels and you have to avoid obstacles and avoid enemies. 
And along the way, you can connect uh, some tokens, which in this case are Zenny tokens, which are tokens that are on the token mint platform. Um, so it's essentially a play to earn game. And to play, you have to use Cobalt, which is a product Serene is working on. So our expected volume, based on what we see with clients from other games, is about 10,000 transactions per week, which at this point for token mint is um, you know, a good amount of transactions. Um, and it's a great way for the team uh, to test their software and to test the infrastructure because going from minting one token to you know, having 10,000 transactions a week to start um, it, it is a lot to handle for a, a brand new project or at least a brand new tool. So that's step one, right? That's just the first game. Next, we're going to build a marketplace. So you'll be able to use the tokens you collect to actually interact with an NFT marketplace where you can improve your character, you can have new obstacles, you could have new enemies, um, and then use the tokens to purchase those NFTs. So that will be live once Token Mint has non-fungible tokens. And then the next step after that is for us to build 10 games or 20 games, or as Rob says, uh, hundreds of games, uh, and have those NFTs be interoperable with all of these games that are running on the Token Mint platform. So imagine 10,000 transactions, you have 100 different games, now you have NFTs embedded in. This is a great way to use Token Mint and see how it functions under pressure. Yeah, and what I love about uh, Layer 3 is that you're not just like in the like academic uh, or like theoretical side of things, you just put things uh, immediately into the real world and you're always iterating. Yeah, I kind of consider us like the crash test dummies for Horizon Labs because we could take anything you build and get 60,000 users on it in 24 hours. So we run a play to earn website called pipeflare.io with 60,000 daily active players. So essentially that's how we test our own code for our clients and that's what we'll be doing for Horizon and Horizon Labs as well. Yeah, and uh, I want to also learn a little bit more about the integration, uh, the integration with like Horizon Labs and uh, for the project. Yeah, it, it's actually been very easy, surprisingly easy, uh, and I just want to say thanks to everyone that's been helping out on, on that team, especially uh, Angie, Eureka has been doing a great job, uh, John, uh, yeah, Angie's in the back waving. Uh, but it's, it was, you know, it was surprising. I thought that this would take a lot longer than it did. So whatever you guys are building is very well documented and easy to integrate. Okay, I want to shift a little bit to uh, what makes things exciting. Um, and I want to go to Serena. What is exciting to you about Token Mint, the token economy? Yeah, I think, uh, especially with Token Mint, it was our first foray into developing an application for end users. So now we can gather, directly gather user feedback um, and focus on making our interface a lot more user friendly. Um, so as you're familiar, like in the Web3 world, um, let's say like user interface and user experience is not necessarily what we're used to in the Web2 world. Um, so now that we have amassed um, a user base for Token Mint, we've started to gather data on uh, usability, developing um, a roadmap into future improvements. Um, and even looking into improvements into like Cobalt as an example, um, is that something that we can use in other side chains as well? Um, and what like the applications are uh, for Cobalt? Great. And Sebastian, yeah, I want to hear more about what excites you. I think it's it's this concept of creating a label. Um, I think it's very uh, important. And I again, I'm in contact with the industry. And I know how difficult it is for, for people to generate uh, money. You know, it's complicated for artists and you guys need to connect to that because I think it's the, it's the challenge and it's going to be the challenge of my company is how you get rewarded for your work. And uh, for technology, what's going to help me to do that, um, I think it, it's, it, it's amazing. It's, it's super exciting, you know, to, to be able for people to get like um, not scared about the technology because they're scared they don't want to put them work out there because they truly think that uh, they don't know what to do you know there is no there is no solution uh, we know how to mint a photo we go and open see but then there is no follow-up 
And I think uh, if through my token, I can kind of give a label to photographer and explain them that working with my company, they're going to get uh, the good credit. And also the client who's going to buy it is going to have like uh, a kind of um, authenticity certificate. Because we know that uh, the blockchain is a public ledger, but for 90% of the people, they have no idea, you know? And this technology needs to go mainstream. They need to understand that by, for example, buying my token, they're going to be able to have a certificate of authenticity, which is going to validate them work. And uh, that's, that's my goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I liked what you said before about web like 2.5, not quite Web3. Yes. Yes, yeah. We're getting there, and also you need to think that when you, we used to buy photo, we used to hang them on our wall, and we still do it in our house, but how many walls do we have? Uh, at some point, even my house is getting full. But in the metaverse, it's going to change. We're going to be able to collect those assets, and when people tell me and make fun about me buying NFT, I tell them, assets are assets no matter if it's digital or not. And also, especially in the world, again, with, where we're getting more nomad and we travel more, how easy and convenient it is to carry uh, your assets with you in your phone or using the Cobalt wallet. I mean, this is extremely pleasant. People who are displaced, for example, in Ukraine, don't you think they're happy when they have to leave them house, to leave them work behind or them furniture? I mean, at least uh, if one day we face a war, I'll be confident in saying, you know, I didn't lose all my life. It's still here, it's still with me. It's kind of uh, a DNA print in, on the blockchain. Yeah, very eloquently put. Um, and Jonathan, what excites you? So this is a conversation that we had with Jordan on one of our first intro calls. There's a lot to go with uh, blockchain gaming on mobile. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Horizon, Horizon Labs solves the issues of mobile gaming um, and whether that's through Token Man or through another platform. You know, uh, Fortnite has three million concurrent players uh, and then Splinterlands, the number one blockchain game, has 170,000 concurrent players, uh, daily players, not concurrent. And how many of those are bots? I don't know. There's a huge gap between blockchain gaming and real gaming. And one of the biggest reasons, I think, is the mobile component. Fortnite, you could play on your phone. Um, my nephew plays it you know, at dinner. Blockchain gaming is almost impossible to play on your phone. That's a huge issue that the first company that solves that is really going to change the game. And I'm pretty confident it will be Horizon or Horizon Labs. Yeah, yeah, mobile and gaming together. What a deadly combination. All right. Uh, so as we close out, I'd like to just have each of the panelists go through like a one, two minute uh, closing thought. I'll start with Serena. Thanks, Zane. Um, so I think in terms of future, it's really exciting to work with like the creator economy, with gaming, um, with the end users in mind. Um, so I'm excited to see all the future development for both Token Mint and Cobalt. Sebastian? Uh, when um, I look for peace, uh, personally, I go, I sit uh, in front of the ocean, and I was telling you, I look at the horizon, because that gives me peace. And uh, if um, like a technology can bring me a peace of mind, again, where I can like focus on content and creating art without uh, having a headache every day, and if the interface is uh, brilliant, I mean, uh, I think I found uh, a way to work with you guys in the future. Let's look at the horizon. <laughs> yes, yes. Jonathan. So uh, right now, blockchain gaming reminds me of when I was trying to uh, peruse the internet on, on dial-up. I mean, the games are slow, they're bulky, they're not really that fun. They're more incentives-based than they are experience-based. Axies is probably the most beautiful game, um, but even that is not that beautiful. And so what I'm most excited about is seeing uh, the game quality overall increase so that eventually they'll be, you know, as, as nice as Sebastian photos, uh, whereas right now they're more kind of like pixel art. 
Um, and I think it would be great for Horizon, Horizon Labs to kind of spur that, whether it's through working with game developers or potentially through uh, Horizon Ventures, funding game studios that are pushing the limits of design and technology. So it'll be really great when uh, blockchain games meet up the quality of normal games. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, panelists, for spending time with us. And thanks, everyone, for kicking us off today for day two. Thank you.